Would you like a reliable environment for writing C++ code without paying a ton of money for it? In this video, I'll show you how you can set up a professional C++ development environment that has tons of features and plugins available, all for free. Let's open Google and search for Visual Studio Code Community Edition. In the search results, the first item, Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition, is the one we want. Let's click on that and then click the download button under Visual Studio Community. This will start the download of the Visual Studio setup executable file. When it's done, let's open the downloads folder and double click the file that we just downloaded to begin the installation. We get a warning message since this file will make changes to our computer. We know where it came from and Microsoft is the verified publisher, so we're good. However, if you don't have sufficient privileges on the computer with your account, you might get stopped here. You'll need to speak to an admin to continue. But for the rest of us, let's click yes. We need to acknowledge the software license terms. Feel free to read through this, but when you're done, click continue. The installer will interrogate our hardware and software versions and figure out what kind of installation is possible. When it's finished, it'll show us all the possible workloads that can be installed on our machine. Your list might be different than what's shown here. Right now, only the core editor is selected, and that will consume 1.24 gig of space. You can scroll down through the list and see what other workloads are available. It includes tools for Linux development, game development, and Node.js. I promised you C++ development, so let's select Desktop Development with C++. Notice when that option is selected, our disk space usage jumps to 11.36 gig. Some of these optional installation items can be unchecked to save space. Things like Live Share, IntelliCode, and the Image Editor. I'll take everything by default and click the Install button. As a bonus, if you stick around until the end of this video, we'll write and compile a simple application, a bit more than a Hello World app, and show off some of the features of the C++ libraries. While the installation continues, please consider clicking the Subscribe and Like button to keep the channel growing. Thank you. I had no issues during this installation process. If you do, I'd suggest restarting it. Microsoft tools are generally really good at correcting issues and continuing. Let's speed up the video to get through this a bit faster. Notice the Start After Installation box is checked, so the IDE will start up when the installation is done. And we're all done. We're asked if we'd like to sign into our Microsoft account. Certainly a good idea if you'll be deploying workloads to the cloud. I'll skip that for now. And one more thing here, I'll change the color theme to light, which tends to show up better on video than the dark does. Let's click Start Visual Studio and close some of these windows. And we're in. We can clone a repository from our internal system or GitHub, open an existing project or solution, open a local file, or create a new project. I'll choose Create a New Project. There are lots of project templates to choose from. I want a simple C++ application with no dependencies on the Microsoft frameworks. So I'll select Console App and click the Next button. We're asked for a project name, location, and solution name. If you're new to Visual Studio, a solution contains information about one or more related projects. It helps to manage and organize your code by grouping dependencies, configuration, and other settings. We'll take all the defaults for our simple application and click Create. Visual Studio responds by creating a very simple Hello World application. Everything in green is comments, so there's only a small amount of code. The pound IO directive includes the header file for the input output stream library. This library allows us to read and write to the console, as well as read user input. The entry point to our code is the main method. Between the curly braces is the body of our main method. Using std, double colon, cout, and the two less than symbols, we write the message hello world and a new line character to the console when our code is run. Let's do that by selecting the start without debugging button in the middle of the top ribbon. Our code is built, and to run it, a console window appears. And we see our message, hello world. 
We can press any key to close the window. And that's it. Everything works. We're done. Now it's bonus time. I promised you a slightly more complicated application, so let's create that right now. Let's get rid of the comments and the hello world message. First, we'll declare a variable, user input of type int. It's uninitialized, so it has a garbage value in it right now. Let's write a message to prompt the user to enter a value. We're going to ask the user to give us a value that will be a loop counter. This message will be sent to C out. We'll write the message from C in and store it in our input variable. We need to validate our data, so let's use the fail function from the C in stream to check our data. This will check to see if there's a type mismatch. In other words, did the user enter something that wasn't an int? If so, we write a message to the output stream that says the data was invalid and we ask for a new value followed by a new line character and then we return a value of 1. Returning a non-zero value is an indication of failure. And returning from within the main method will terminate our application. Next, we'll add a for loop that will iterate from 0 to the value the user supplied to us, incrementing by 1 each time. Inside the loop, we'll print the message iteration number followed by the current iteration number. When the loop is done, we print the message all done and we'll return a value of zero, which is how we indicate success to the operating system. Let's run our new code. We're prompted for a loop count. Let's put in some bad data first. We'll enter a value of P. We get the invalid input message, which is what we wanted. Now let's run the code again. This time let's enter a value of nine. And we see our loop was executed nine times, and we get the all done message. Before we go, let's go find the code that Visual Studio built for us. First, let's open a terminal window by selecting View Terminal. In the terminal window that's open, let's run dir to see where we are. I'm running Windows as an emulator, so I have a directory called ARM64. Your directory might be different. Let's cd into whatever directory you have there, then cd into the debug directory, and run dir. And here we see the .exe file the Visual Studio created for us. The .pdb file is used for debugging. It isn't something we care about right now. Let's run the executable file. And we're prompted for input, just like we were when we ran the code in the IDE. We can put in good and bad values and see similar results. That's all for this time. If you found this video useful, please share it with others. Thanks for watching and remember to always begin secure.